Hi, I'm Sally Briggs. I'm glad you're here today. I'm excited to share with you another word um, that I feel like God has shown me in my own heart as he wants to show you in your own hearts. If you are a Christian, if you've asked Jesus to come into your life as Lord and Savior, then do you realize that you received the Holy Spirit as your down payment? The Holy Spirit is the part of the Trinity that actually comes and lives within you, dwells within you. That's why when we are told that we are the temple for the Lord, we are the temple because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You truly are a temple for Him. And the Holy Spirit is amazing. The Holy Spirit provides you with all, all that you need to accomplish all that you do through every trial in every single day. He is your strength. But before I really go there, I need to start with prayer. I always do. I feel like it um, allows God to be present right in this moment. I'm inviting Him. I am inviting Him to be my words so that if I start to speak something that is not exactly as He wants it, He can just show me right inside my heart, right inside my spirit, because he lives in there. Isn't that so powerful? Isn't that so incredibly amazing? So, dear Father, I thank you for whoever is listening right now. I thank you, God, that if they are not a believer, if they have not chosen to accept you, Jesus, as their Lord and Savior, that they would really consider it now, that they would think upon the great gift of re receiving such um, true favor and blessing and salvation through Jesus. So, and if you are already a believer, and then, Lord, I just pray that you speak right now into their hearts exactly what they need to hear, exactly for the season that they're going through, and that you, Holy Spirit, would receive the glory in this and through this. In Jesus' precious name, above all names, amen. Amen. So again, I'm just so glad you are here today. I just want you to realize um, how much the Holy Spirit wants to be involved in your life every day in every single thing. So when you ask Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you receive the Holy Spirit who lives within you always. Uh, scripture tells us that we can actually grieve the Holy Spirit. That means make him sad by the choices we, we make, the things that we do, the words that we say, um, the thoughts that we have. Anything that is out of order in God's order is um, something that will grieve the Holy Spirit within us. And you know what? You will feel the grievance of the Holy Spirit. When you are off track, when you are living in sin, when you are choosing to do the things that God tells us not to do, such as gossip or lying or stealing or having an affair or... Um, uh, getting drunk, whatever it may be that you know in your heart, because the Holy Spirit speaks to us individually. He is a convictor. A convictor means that he doesn't condemn you. He doesn't say, oh, you're finished because you did that. But he gently pricks you with a knowledge inside your heart that this isn't right. This isn't something I should be doing. And the only reason he does that is because he knows, God knows, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, they know what things are going to be good for us and beneficial to us and bless us and um, create joy in us and peace in us, and they know which things will not. So the pricking of the, of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit, is only for our benefit to help us receive everything God wants to give us. So we need to be paying attention to that because he truly will keep you on God's path. But we need to recognize his voice. We need to start being sensitive to him. We need to think about what we're doing. We need to think about what we're thinking. Is this how God would have us 
do right now or have us go right now or have us say right now because it tells us in God's word that we are to be imitators of Christ. That means that we are to do things the way Jesus would do if he were right here with us right now because the Holy Spirit is right here with you right now within you. So he's wanting that same relationship. He's wanting you to be all that you can be on this earth, not just for yourself, but for others. You're to be the light for others. You're supposed to bring the Holy Spirit presence into groups of people that you're with, into um, meeting places, into the grocery store, into the restaurant, wherever you may be, you're bringing the Holy Spirit with you and you are presenting him as the light of the world that others can, may see him by your actions, by your decisions, by staying in his peace when others may be afraid or freaking out or unsettled or anxious, you are able completely to remain calm, to remain peaceful, to keep your joy because you have the Holy Spirit within you. He enables you to be that way. Isn't that awesome? tells us in Galatians 5 that when we received the Holy Spirit, we received love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You've received all those things within you. They're just bubbling within you with the Holy Spirit, wanting you to manifest them. But it's our choice then to manifest them. They are within you. So when we are told that self-control is one of the fruit of the Spirit, it's actually the last one. There's nine of them. Self-control is the last one listed because I believe it takes self-control to do all of the others. It takes self-control to have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. And it takes self-control to walk in those things, to choose those things over the other feelings that you may have, the other negative words you may want to speak. You have the capability within you because the Holy Spirit provides you with it. So like the other day I was speaking to my husband and he was making me grumpy and he was saying things I didn't want to say. And it was making me he wasn't making me, but I was allowing myself to get anxious and kind of angry and a little bit resentful and a little bit perturbed at him. I was allowing myself. Don't ever say, he made me feel that way. You, you made me feel that way. No. You know what? That person didn't make you. They didn't force your feelings on you. We choose to allow our feelings to move in the ways that we allow them. If we choose to overlook an unkind word, we can do that. If we choose to come back with a kind word instead of a negative, angry word, we can do that. We are capable of doing that because we have all, all the gifts, all the fruit that the Holy Spirit has provided us with to enable us to do it. So I chose, I chose to change my words. I chose to be quiet when my husband was irritating me. I could have come back at him and said, well, but this and this, and I believe this, and I think I'm right. No, I let it go. Do you know how wonderful it is to let it go? Let go and let God. Let go, let the Holy Spirit speak into you. Be quiet enough to listen. Sometimes we're just too busy talking and fretting and anxious to even realize what you've been given by the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve him. Let him rise up within you. Let him convict you when, he, when you need to be convicted and move forward in the nine fruit of the Spirit. It will change your whole life. So if you need to look at those again, they're in Galatians 5. You walk in them, you're going to feel such the blessing of God because all that nine, love, joy, peace, patience, 
kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those will cover anything that is negative that would come out of your own thoughts and your own feelings. Those nine fruit of the Spirit will cover every single negative one. Cover them. Cover them. Let the fruit of the Spirit rise up. Receive the peace God wants you to have. Receive the joy that God wants you to have. Receive it by walking in the Spirit. And that's how you do it. So God bless you. I pray that this would help you to think in your interactions throughout the day. Help you to think about what you're thinking about. Am I needing to think about this big, ugly, black, negative feeling? No, you don't. You can change it. You have self-control. And you have all the beautiful other fruit of the Spirit to just cover that negativity. So I just pray over you, Lord God, I pray that whoever heard this would receive, would recognize what they have as a believer, would recognize the beautiful deposit of the Holy Spirit within themselves and walk in it. Walk in the, in the fruit of the Spirit that others would see your light, Heavenly Father, and that each one right now would, would just feel your peace as they go throughout their days. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.